I want to show you guys a video, a little iPhone video clip of the recording of the horns on Awaken Me. So this was at Torin's house. She cut these horns in Pro Tools, so. I love little video clips like that, just in retrospect when the release is coming, just to see the making of the track. All right, so check it out. I'm just gonna load up the session and show you guys how it all came together. Yeah, this is a huge session, actually. There's a lot going on in this session. I mean, it's still crazy to me. We're all remote. I've actually never met Kyla in person or met Eldre in person, but we all know each other through the internet. So it's crazy what you can do just through Instagram DMs, through Zoom. They haven't even met each other, but now they're probably gonna do records together. Wild, man. So this is how it all started. Back in April, Eldre DM'd me and he sent me a couple things. He sent me a melody loop, which I worked on, but it's not what we ended up releasing. And he sent me a drum loop. And as he said, he's like, well, I'm the drum guy. So normally people know me for doing the drums. But I like this drum loop and I was like, it, I'm gonna just make something to this. So check it out. Here are the drums that Eldre sent me. Dope vibe. What I started with was guitar chops. And what I did was I played some chords in Trillion because Trillion has bass, but it also has other electric guitars in it. So I added these chords. This was around April 2020, around the beginning of the pandemic. It took me like two seconds, just played that. Then I added some bass to it, synth bass. Kind of gave me like this D'Angelo, J Dilla kind of vibe. So I just rolled with it. Next thing I did was I added some vocal chops. Just. Just. And then I was at my apartment because I do a lot of work in headphones on my apartment and I just started rapping on it. So this is what my rap sounds like. Basically, that was the beginning of the track. And so I sent that to Eldre maybe like an hour later or something. I just threw it down. It was very quick. I think it took maybe like 15 minutes or something, but it was a vibe and it felt good. And the track sat for a while until I was going through my tracks on Twitch and people were like, yo, that sounds crazy. And I was like, all right, I'm going to work on it. I started messing with it a little bit on Twitch, working on the mix getting it to sound a little more cohesive, working on the arrangement. Then I was like, yo, I'm gonna hit up Torin. I'm gonna see if he wants to play some guitar on it. So I sent it over to Torin and he sent me a bunch of dope guitar stuff. The approach I took was I put a gate on it. So it's like little bits and little chops, kind of like the vocal part to give it this staccato feel. And this is some bass Torin played. And then he played some organ. I think that was a real organ he played it on. If I'm not mistaken, I think he said that. At that point, we had the chops, Torn's guitar, Eldre's drums, synth bass. And then he was like, yo, I added something crazy. Kyla was at the studio and she laid down horns on it. 
she must have given me a session with like 80 tracks with like tons of dope horn stuff. So when I first heard it, I was like, yo, it's on. I sent a text to Eldre with that Pro Tools session that I played. Eldre was like, yo, that's crazy. So check it out. I'm going to play you guys some of the horn stuff. So on the horns, I added a gate because what the gate did was it just kind of kept with that very staccato feel. So let's hear these horns with the whole track. Waking. Crazy, crazy. And then this was the more complex part. So many stacks, so much goodness. Check this out. This is where, like, you hear it and you're like, yo, this track is legendary. And also, Torin and Kyla recorded Kyla singing, because she's also a vocalist, not just a horn player, but a vocalist. And what I did was I added compression and just used her voice as an instrument on the track. So this is the singing part. And then all together. And then this part. So like for that part, I wanted to have a buildup. So I took one of the chords, added a reverb tail. I have this tip on my YouTube if any of you guys wanna know how I did this. But basically what I did was I added a reverb to a little note, a one little note of it, took that reverb tail, reversed it, and came up with this. I did a TikTok video also showing how I did this. So it's on my TikTok. I mean, that's pretty much it. Like the track is complex, but simple at the same time. There's just a lot of great minds that came together. Let's look at the master. What do I do on the master? The first effect on the master is a tape stop. And that's just here. Wait. Just the ending. The next effect, I have a Gulf Foss. The reason I put Gulf Foss on it is, I've talked about this a lot on the stream. Look. What they did was they studied the human ear and they took frequencies that sound good to the human ear and put it into this plugin. So as you turn up the recover and tame, it's matching the song to those frequencies that are pleasing to our ear. So Gulfoss is pretty much always first on my master chain. Then I added multiband compression. Without it. With it. With it. So what it's basically doing is it's just compressing all the frequency bands, high, mid, and low. And once I compress the high band, I added two decibels of gain to just kind of give it this shimmer. So I really like using the high frequency band and multiband to give you this high end brightness. After that, I have a saturator just to give it more warmth. So this is without it. It kind of just brings out some of the crunch in the mix. After that, I have a glue compressor. It's just catching like a little bit of peaks from the kick and snare. 
I have a fast release, medium attack. And it's soft clipping, just to give a little more punch. So it's giving a lot of gain and a little bit of gain for the kicks into the soft clipper and glue. So it's just, it's clipping just a little bit on the output. After that, I'm going into a Fab Filter Pro L2 with two decibels of gain. So after the clipping, it's squashing it just a little bit just to get some more loudness. And for those of you who want to know, the LUFS is around negative eight. So I don't do the negative 13 LUFS. I don't feel like every track needs to. Streaming services will turn it down, but in my opinion, that's okay. I don't have a problem with that. And also, I'm mastering my album right now, and I'm trying to get it around negative eight LUFS, give or take. Some of them are negative nine, negative 9.5. Some of them are like negative 7.5, but around that range is what I'm mastering towards. So that is Awaken Me, and that's how the track came together with myself, with Eldre, with Torin, and with Kyla. We brought it all together, and that's how we did it, right in Ableton. Any questions?